All right, here we are taking a visit up to Iowa to see my buddy Shane. We've been sort of online friends for at least two or three years in the laser community, and he decided he needed a new press break, and we were talking back and forth. And so he ended up getting uh, the very first Ramsey-branded Benforce press break. Benforce is my own brand name. The only place you can buy that is from the Benforce.com website. So just showing you a few pictures here that Shane took of the uh, unloading and rigging and all that. And uh, he ended up using a rotator to get it in place and it could not have worked out better. So uh, you see the full crew there, uh, Shane's crew and uh, me in the picture there. But here's a look at the machine. So it's uh, Shane and, and his, um, his fabricator that you're looking at here, which is Brighton. Uh, great name for the guy. He's very bright. Uh, picked up on this press break like super fast, super easy. And, um, you know, these, these press brakes are a four plus one axis. They are a little bit more complicated than the two axis brakes. But, you know, with the features and things that they have, um, they just give you a lot of flexibility. So. Let's see that. Looks about right. Look at me, man. Do I look like I've ever shot away from anything? <laughs> that looks. So we always start out with these machines doing some very basic uh, 90 degree bends in some thin material, you know, just to get the feel of things. You know, make sure we can we have control of the brake. Meaning when we, you know, when we make. Uh, corrections and so forth that the brake is responding like we expect it to so uh here you see shane and uh brighton just uh now uh, while we while i was there doing the training they actually had a uh an order come in for some uh cattle trough covers and uh so shane had cut these on his bistronic six kilowatt laser that you'll see some in the background here as we pan around it's an older machine but uh, super cool, and um, he's been running it for a few years and knows it extremely well. But there's a good chance to get the brakes some action on, on a real part, not just you know messing around with some, some uh, you know scraps that we were bending there. Shane already had some press brake experience. He's got another brake that you can see in the background, but um, a little bit older school, you know, uh, technology than uh, what we're using here. Um, but one of the things I, I do for everybody that, you know, whether we're doing remote video slash uh, phone training or I'm on site doing training is just going through some basic press brake operator training and, uh, you know, something that can be covered uh, among a lot of things is... Uh, just watch out for the tail whip on a longer part like this, you know, because you have the, you know, you have the part extended out, you know, say three, four feet away from the brake. When that thing comes down to make the bend, it can whip up pretty violently and you need to, you know, you need to be holding it against the backstop, but also have light pressure on the back end of it and be clear of it, you know, don't crowd yourself up against it because it could hurt you when it flips up there. So this particular brake is an eight foot, 145 ton, 
CNC servo brake. It's four plus one axis. It's got the Dellum DA53 controller. It is a 2D controller. It's got 2D on-screen drawing. Okay, all right. Sorry. No, that's okay. So you may have noticed in the first couple of segments, the uh, back gauge fingers were not moving in and out um, as the bend was taking place. And, you know, the, the back gauge fingers are, um, you know, the back stops basically are, are hinged and they are made to kind of, you know, flip up if they get contacted when the bend occurs. Um, there is a setting in the brake where you can program it to pull the back gauge fingers away uh, once the uh, punch has made contact with the material and has it clamped into place, but before the actual bend occurs. And we, we enabled that, and you can see the back gauge fingers now moving away uh, back and forth as the uh, bend occurs. So it was pretty cool that we had this uh, kind of part to make here. It was uh, putting the brake through the paces. It's, it wasn't a dimensionally critical part. Um, so it allowed us to kind of dial some things in and make actually some adjustments with the way the corners were fitting up just in real time. But hey, we're in Iowa. What would you expect us to be making other than cattle trough covers? Know what I mean? Just a little, yep, a little open. Maybe just a quarter degree more. All right, so just uh, getting a little look around the brake. It does come with some uh, side door covers that mount right here. Um, and uh, these guys have elected not to install them. They are kind of bulky and big and take up a lot of extra space. And if you just got a small shop with one or two guys, you know, from a safety point of view, not, not really uh, required. But just showing you a look at some of the new um, hydraulic stuff uh, on the machine and the uh, in advance um, power on demand uh, servo and pump set up there. So pretty nice stuff. But one of the cool things about this uh, whole uh, trip was this was back in December and fast forward these guys have been using the machine for a couple months now and they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff with it look at this gig that they got you know they didn't have gooseneck punches yet they they're going to get some at some point um, and when you got you know when you're in rural Iowa and you got a customer asking you to make parts um, you know you figure out a way to do it so they plasma cut a window in there in this one section of punch to be able to bend these uh you know these channel pieces that you know just didn't have enough clearance now you can buy dies that have a window built into them but you know who's got one sitting in stock you're talking about three week lead time a customer's not going to wait for that so this was pretty cool here too so at the very first they're going to make a sacrificial bend in the middle of this part and this bend that you see is only to give clearance to make these other long flanged legs that are gonna eventually form another long channel. And there just absolutely would not be enough clearance with the tooling, stock tooling on the brake to make this. So um, so you just, you know, bend your, make your temporary sacrificial bend in the middle 
then bend your two legs and then you'll see here in a second you come back and form it in the middle again to straighten it back out so you know a lot of guys will show me drawings and parts and things i mean there's so many ways that you can get stuff done in this and i certainly don't know every way to some degree if you're going to own a press break you have to be creative like uh brighton and and um shane are doing here when you don't have a gooseneck die Okay, so if you're interested in any of these breaks and want to check out my website, it's bendforcebreaks.com. And on the site, you'll see pretty quickly we have it broken down into the uh, Precision Series and Fabricator Series breaks. So if you go into the Precision Series, you can see over on the right here, we've got uh, the different prices and the payments for those. These are estimated payments, you know, based on a down payment, things like that. Um, and if you, you know, a little bit more information about the, the machine. And then if you're interested in financing and the payments, you can go here to the learn about, and then, uh, you can call this number and get qualified. This is Stearns bank, uh, who I'm partnered with, or you can just click the apply now button and go right into the application to see if you qualify and what size break you would qualify for. So benforcebreaks.com if you want to check that out. So um, I mentioned about the uh, the press break calculator on the Cincinnati website. Now they actually have an app you can uh, you can put on your phone here. So, but if you want to just use it on a computer, it's super simple. Let me show you real quick. So right here, you just select the material you want. Uh, right here, you select your die opening. So for mild steel in thicker material, you want to use eight times the material thickness. So let's just say we want to bend quarter inch. So we're going to do eight times quarter inch is a two inch die opening. You know, you can select the grade here if you want. Uh, Miles Steel obviously doesn't have any uh, subgrades. So the bending length on a press break is always how wide your part is. Let's say, now let's say 24 inches wide and then how thick is the material. So 0.25 and then uh, right here, calculate it. You need 30.6 tons to bend that. 